Welcome back to The Why. I'm Lauren Magarino. Big tech is doing big prep as midterms approach. Twitter has introduced a set of guidelines that seeks to protect civic conversation. And TikTok has banned political advertising in addition to banning politicians from using app tipping tools or having access to ad features. And hey, Facebook also announced it's disabling new political ads a week before midterms. But Will all of these safeguards be enough to keep Americans from being misinformed as we head to midterms? The FBI is keeping a close eye on election-related content on social platforms and other democratic institutions as well. So joining the conversation now is Laura Demlo, Section Chief for the FBI's Foreign Influence Task Force. Laura, thank you for being here. Before the 2020 election, the FBI warned that foreign actors and cyber criminals would potentially spread disinformation regarding the 2020 results. What is the FBI doing to stay ahead of potential foreign actors in the midterms? Well, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate the question. For the FBI, what has what combating foreign influence and protecting our elections has meant has been really persistently combating foreign malign influence. For us, that really means two things. What we need in order to use our authorities to understand and combat this kind of activity is first attribution to a foreign government or actor or their proxy. And second, some indication that the activity itself is what we call malign influence. And the malign influence sort of definition for us, the scope of that has been really important. What we're looking for is undeclared, or covert or criminal activity, um, again, that's being conducted on behalf of or by a foreign government or intelligence service. Well, how has Russia uh, evolved since 2020 when it comes to its, ta its tactics that we saw play out with that election? That's a great question. Um, well, in 2016, we saw, you know, many people have paid attention to this for a long time, but we saw influence actors doing pretty basic digital influence operations. They were they were pretend, pretending to be people they weren't on the internet, essentially. In 2018, we saw an evolution of some of that methodology to, um, to the, the sort of more savvy use of using innocuous, non-political content to build followers before transitioning to more explicitly political content. In 2020, what we started to see was a combination of those quote unquote traditional digital influence operations to also looking to co-opt unwitting Americans and foreigners um, in combination with those digital influence ops. So in 2019, the Internet Research Agency, the IRA, which is a Russian influence organization, they set up an NGO, a non-governmental organization in Ghana and Nigeria called Eliminating Barriers for the Liberation of Africa, or EBLA. Um, that was looking, they were looking to hide the hand of the Russian government behind their efforts to influence American politics that year. So in 2020, U.S. social media companies and broadcast media were able to expose that particular effort really before it got off the ground. Wow. Another tool that we saw, or another sort of change that we saw in 2020, another example, was the IRA setting up a website called Peace Data. Mm. That that company hired hundreds of unwitting foreign and American journalists to create content targeting specific demographics here in the United States. The writers were real, but the editors that were producing the content, that were editing the content, those were IRA employees who were looking, who were high, who were operating under fake personas. As far as action, you know, what do they need to look out for on social media to make sure and discern? Okay, this is mis or disinformation, and this is okay content for me to take in. It's a great question and a really hard one. Our, inform our information ecosystem, the uh, space we operate in, is really complex. It's really diverse, but that also means that it's really resilient. So look for multiple authoritative sources on social media, in print and broadcast media. Looking for multiple sources across platforms really helps to verify the authenticity and accuracy of information that you're receiving. And of course, if you if you see threats of violence, um, threats or in disinformation about the time, manner or place of elections, so disinformation or inaccurate information about how, when or where you can vote, um, that's something that you can either flag through some of the social media platforms, they've got their own portals to do so, or of course, contact local law enforcement. Laura Demlo with the FBI's Foreign Influence Task Force, we appreciate you joining us and sharing your insight. Thank you. Thank you so much.